see what they decide to ban first, starting with Rebels Anarchy. Yes, indeed. Oh, so, sorry, Cassiopeia will be the first ban. Typical stuff against Frozen here. Uh, but you have to watch out for Frozen's Varus on the red side is one of the major issues that you have when facing this team. And also, Expression's champion pool a little bit a little bit unknown right now. Yeah. We, play, we were looking at that earlier, like Top Olaf. Uh, Top Olaf. <laughs> a lot of Azir. He's been playing mid as well, so... We'll see if, if some of these mid lane champions will end up uh, transitioning their way to top lane. All right, Zed ban. That is probably a good indication that Frozen wants to go Azir or Victor. And Mickey has, of course, counterpicked with that Zed many times in the past. But if they're banning Zed, that probably means that I am once a priority mid laner like Victor in the first round of the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, they could just counterpick and Mickey would never pick Zed. So if you're going to make that ban, I think you're banking on. Banking on getting probably Victor, Victor very soon. So if you're thinking about um, getting the Victor and you're you know worried about IM's um, well, the Varus and Frozen playing Varus, then would you maybe ban it here and then like take the Victor or like would, would that still leave you open to a lot of things in the mid lane? Yeah, we're gonna see how they play it out. The Lulu ban is more of a, a pocket pocket ban right here against Frozen rather than something they're probably seriously considering taking. But Callista and Gragas and are still available, Sivir as well. I'm not, I don't think Anarchy's gonna first pick Victor. I think that Mickey is comfortable on enough of like champions like Ari that right. that's not gonna be necessary. Uh, but Ari less of a less of a problem, I would say, for Victor than uh, than that Zed is. Could be like I said, could be the Azir also. The Rise Ban. Yeah, Rise Ban actually coming out of Anarchy, but Ixu's pretty much exclusively been playing tanks. Right. Maokai or Hecarim. I mean, we have seen Rise in the mid lane with um, Faker pulling it out. It's Faker, so your mileage may vary, but <laughs> yeah. but we have seen I also seen saw it. Faker play Aurelia in the mid lane. And Master Yi. <laughs> so, Callista. Yeah, Callista ban. So, question for Anarchy right now. Do they want the Sivir? Do they want the Gragas? They want the Sivir over everything else. And I thing. am here. I think you have to take the Gragas because Lyra is too strong on that champion mechanically and he provides too much early pressure ganking in the mid lane. I think you probably take Victor. Wow, Rek'Sai, I think you, you take the Gragas and you take Victor here more than likely. What these hovers kind of indicate to me is that maybe Tuzan's looking for an early game impact because Rek'Sai or Gragas both, you know, have offer that kind of early game uh, pressure that you need and Annie's locked in. Yeah, the Annie has been rising in priority in Korea. It's almost always locked in in the first round of the draft on red side. Uh, of course, providing that instant engage. Not great synergy between Gragas and Annie ultimates, though, even though you do have some decent kill pressure in lane. But they're going to be potentially giving that victor up to Mickey right now. Please don't pick Yasuo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's how I feel every time. Every Eric. time. Every time, that is how I feel. Well, Echo, Yasuo. Now, Expression has been playing a lot of Irelia mm -hmm. in top. And that is going to be a Nidalee lock for Lyra. Interesting. So maybe he's thinking that he wants to find maybe uh, Tucson in the jungle and try to kill him there. Because Nidalee does that fairly well. Yeah, that. he's going to have to be careful about how he does it, though. Because if he starts invading against an Annie, he could get caught out. Pretty easily. There's the tanky Nautilus just to deal with the Annie in the laning phase. And I think Nidalee is just a great choice for this Anarchy team. You have that highly mechanical jungler who likes to play aggressively, who likes to gank a lot in the laning phase. Frozen hovering over that Luxia is definitely not going to fix that, even though it is a specialty of his. Maybe in 5.12. Or is it 5.11, the the e buffs? Uh, no, it's not 5.11. In 12. Then. Maybe next patch. Maybe he next patch. So, so Zareth is the hover. No, I think it's going to be Azir. Uh, or probably actually Azir works very nicely with the rest of this composition in terms of poke and siege right now. So Looks Azir good. is, I think, going to be the best for this composition so far. I am kind of going for a weird mix of disengage and engage right here. The Annie may not be the best selection, but it's a good takeaway pick at the very least. 
Well, then you still have the potential for like a big wombo combo because the Annie gets her stun off, and then you have the Azir just shoving everybody for massive, massive damage. Yeah. So the possibility is there. The possibility is there, yes. It definitely is. So they are waiting on their top laner. So trying to get Expression a comfortable matchup. Which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. first time in the booth in over a year. And Expression was always a strong laner. He's very much a 1v1 player. So yes. giving him the advantageous matchup would probably be the best. And we have a Varus and Rumble hover. Yeah, Varus for Mickey would be a bit of a change up from his normal style where he much more prefers champions that he can get to other lanes in and start snowballing by roaming on the map. This time, however, he'll be taking some siege. Now, this is very reminiscent of uh, a composition that Jin Air would run. Mm -hmm. uh, they like to play that Italy jungle, uh, especially with the Sivir, and just peel everything out. Uh, because Anarchy right now, their main problem is that they lack engage, so they have to kite with this composition. Right. Uh, they can drop the Equalizer and then maybe hope they get like a, a Chain of Corruption. But I mean, that's it. The Jax oh. has long been an expression special. And I think it's a fairly decent matchup. Oh, you have seen him play this. Yeah, in solo, in solo queue. queue. So that's been a thing, but... <laughs> oh, just ignores his troll on it. Renekton. Glad me. <laughs> They're just going over all these farm split push specialties. I think the Shivana actually is a real possibility, though. Aurelia. And no, will be the Aurelia, one of his most played champions in solo queue. So coming in today, I am really mixing it up. They have, in the past, generally preferred to play with champions like Rumble or Gnar in the top lane, providing that tankiness there. But this time, Expression is going to be on a more carry-oriented top laner. And that's Aurelia is a great pick right here. Aurelia is going to do very well getting on top of champions like Varus and Nidalee. Definitely. And it's also, it's the backline threat that they needed. Because they have Azir and then they have Corky kind of just holding that front. And meanwhile, the Gragas is a giant roadblock. But at the same time, Anarchy has Nautilus as the roadblock with the huge AoE slow that he puts down with his E. So it would be interesting to see it, who gets the better flank, who gets the better engages, who gets the better setups. And with Anarchy with their um, with their stellar vision control, I feel like Long Island will really have to work for that to really break their siege. Yeah, and that is that could be quite problematic. I'm just very worried about Anarchy in, jungle, in general because they're so reliant on kiting, right. and there's a lot of engage. Gragas, Annie, Aurelia on this IM team. So they're going to have to play this siege really, really well, make sure they land those skill shots from Nidalee and Varus. And it's no surprise Anarchy would be going for a composition that is focused around the performance of Lyra and Mickey, but Instead of them going in, it's going to be about kiting this time, guys. Well, we're going to go into game number one here between LZIM and Anarchy Rebels. I messed it up, Barry. It was uh, it was Rebels Anarchy. I already forgot their new name. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, congratulations on IM's third year anniversary. Apparently, they've been around for a while. Uh, that's just for that's just for LOL. Actually, they've yeah. been around much longer in StarCraft II. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, one of if not the most successful StarCraft II teams of all time. Unfortunately, didn't translate into League of Legends. <laughs> not not yet. Is, is it their time to shine? Expression I mean, is back. You saw that sign. Summer is only the beginning for Long <laughs> Zoo I am. Uh, I'm very intrigued by Expression's return just because he always was a very solid top laner in a region that is known for top lane talent. Right. So, his, uh, and I'm, I'm happy we get to see him on Aurelia see his carry potential this game, not just going for a tank like Maokai. Maokai curiously falling all the way through pick and ban this game. Right, which is odd because Ix is such a big Maokai player. And we kind of see maybe a possible lane swap. 
Yeah, it looks like they may want to just try and shut down this Aurelia early. Have Rebel do the jungle follow alongside Nidalee. And that's what we are going to get right here. Pretty standard ward placement right at level one. And I am, as well as Anarchy, just going to set up for an easy, easy freeze. Well, meanwhile, the Ann is standing, standing by in the bot lane with her stun up. And Snowflower going for the harass, but not much here. Yeah, he came over, and I am actually curiously starting at the Krugs, not something you normally see, because normally you want to avoid this situation, especially against the Nautilus. It is so important that you actually clean up your jungle pathing against support Nautilus, because he is by far the most annoying level one support to deal with. And he's really delaying them on that red buff, and they yep. have to call over Ignar from bottom. Yep. Well, they're going to try something a little crazy right here. Ignar does not have a stun loaded up, hasn't even skilled, in a, uh, has skilled his Q, actually. He just skilled. Yeah, just skilled that, so didn't have that up, but it's not something that Snowflyer was going to know. This delays Longs I am by a fair amount. I mean, maybe we can see a possible invade onto their blue um, later on, but I guess it is the double, it is the strong side for Longs I am, so they might be safer. Yeah, they are going to be safer, but the, the question is here, what is Ignar going to do? Because his time has really been cut coming into this follow situation. And there's a reason why this uh, the, the jungle pathing has evolved in lane swaps in Korea into doing buffs first. Because you just don't want the enemy support to roam in and start messing you up like that. Because it really does, as you're saying, Barry, throw off all your timings. Right. And we see Tucson went straight to his blue, so he's going to probably get that safely. Yeah, so it's just a delay here, not much, but that is going to give Lyra a, a better timing window where a counter gank is just simply not going to be possible from IM. He could go straight for a gank right now, and Tucson really isn't going to have any way to feasibly stop him. Also has a chance just to come down here and help break the freeze if he wants. So a lot of freedom right now. Oh, and we have... Oh. And our, uh, Annie in the top lane, which was noticed, but no stun means no kill. Yeah, Song Yun also going to have spell shields, so that isn't the biggest deal. They really want to shove this into into the tower so they can bounce it back. Yeah, they they definitely do. So Ignar showing up there may mean that well, Lyris is going to get some free jungling right now using that Trailblazer just to move through the jungle pretty fast, and then. Is he going to actually try for some warding? He does have that extra green ward. Yep, is going to be seen in the river as well. All right. I mean, slow. It's game slowed down significantly from starting from that uh, invade from Snowflower. We've got both supports in the top lane. Meanwhile, Rumble and Quirky in there, one v one. Yordle <laughs> fight in the bottom lane. <laughs> Yordle wars. Yordles who are in machines. Quite the theme. I guess. I'm still waiting for a, for an adequate reason why Corky does not have fur, but Rumble and other male Yordles do. I have the perfect um, answer for that. It's because he is, he hasn't been reworked yet. He doesn't have a visual <laughs> update. That's actually probably true. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually probably the real reason. We've gotten to the heart of it, Barry. I know. Just cutting straight to <laughs> cutting straight to the core right here. That's what I do. It's you. The, the the razor of truth, oh, is that what man. they call you? Barry Truth's razor. I mean, if you really delve into the Chinese characters back in my crane name, no, not really. Okay, Paragon gonna oh. get jumped on a little bit, take some pounce damage from Lyra. Uh, Lyra just gonna try and get one last spear in there. Can't land it, but nice one from the brush, and uh, th that bottom side very heavily warded right now. Not really... I mean, a little bit of a successful gig. Paragon may have to think about going back out of potions, but... But he still has both of Summer, so I think he's in a good spot, even though Ixu is at full health. So we'll see if he can CS safely under that tower or if he falls behind at all. Yeah. Snowflower has an opportunity here just to push this into the turret and then recall and then maybe make a play in conjunction with Lyra on the bottom side. They're just covering in mid lane right now. Tucson there, but Tucson really going to have a hard time getting an angle on this Nidalee. Right. And they spot Annie moving through the bottom bottom jungle there. And recalls all around for Long Zoo I am. Oh boy. Aren't lane swaps fun? The so answer is farming. yes. So much farming. <laughs> That's what I like. I like to see who recalls when, 
how they path through the jungle, which supports get an advantage through harassing, like we saw. That That is truly the most beautiful part of League of Legends. Truly. It is. Okay. You know what the most beautiful part of League of Legends is for me? I just want to see all the mechanical outplays so I can say <laughs> later on, you know, social media, who's, you know, it's like, it's almost like a my dad is better than your dad kind of fight. It's like my player is better than your player, so. You say you have to have arguments with people, but oh, you're man. an SKT fan, so you always win because you like Faker. Unless Easy Home plays. <laughs> and then sometimes I win. Mostly. I still mostly win. All right. Well, some people might say it's a cop out for me to like SKT because they're the best, but that's why I like them. <laughs> you like them because they're the best. Yeah. See, poor, poor me, and, poor and the, the, my my KT fandom never never getting to go to Worlds. Oh, oh here's the play. Wave. Mickey getting knocked around. Actually, Chain of Corruption goes down. There's the hail of arrows. Mickey boxed in by Tucson and Ignar. Great play. Yeah, nice mechanical play, and that's what you have to be. Uh, a little bit worried about if you're playing this Varus in the mid lane. His flash was blown earlier. Lyra oh. there for some reason. And flash okay. Yeah, just going to flash straight into the wall right there. Ignar still waiting. It's worth noting that Ignar never showed during that gank. He was just standing in the brush while Mickey never made it there. And the brush was pink warded. So they didn't necessarily know that Ignar was there. But you have to be very careful coming into the mid lane like that when a gank has just gone down. I am looking for this dragon, and they're going to get it. Well earned. Well earned. Those wards, that is one of the most dangerous places to walk in right. League of Legends. Well, we'll see if Rebels Anarchy can make it back from that. And we're going to see a replay quickly. You just can't walk there. If yeah. you don't have a pink ward in that situation, uh, they should have known which way people were going. And look at this, the punishment of the Varus continuing. They know if they shut down Mickey that this Anarchy team is going to have a lot of problems winning this game. So they're just going to continue standing there. And it's kind of interesting. This is normally what we see from Anarchy, where Snowflower will go on the roam and, you know, Sangyun just sits there by himself on the bottom side. Oh, no. They're doing it again. Oh, they've been doing it this whole time. They've been doing it this whole time, Barry. They have not moved. Well, Are we'll you ready see. for a flash stun? Here we go. And There's the, the explosive cask, and Beautiful. there is the finisher. Mickey gets taken down. And Ignar the and Expression and under trouble gets roasted by that oh. equalizer, but reverses the kill at the same time. Just barely enough. Just barely enough, and that was Expression showing on the t or I mean uh, Lyra rather showing on the top side of the map for a one v one. Definitely a disadvantage, and Expression doing all right. So. Here's a question. Your poke comp that fell uh, fell behind in the early mid game, what do you do to get back into the game? Do you set up picks? Do you try to set up some sort of siege? What do you do? So remember how we talked about how Anarchy doesn't really have a reliable form of engage? Well, when that happens, you can more or less throw picks right out the window because you, it's so hard to set up picks with something like depth charge because they can flash over a wall or something and just get out of it, really. Right. So you could set up picks with Mickey pretty much only if he can land that chain of corruption or you can catch somebody out with an equalizer. But it's definitely not easy for Anarchy's comp to do. I think the best thing they can do right now is try and get position on the dragon or something like that and have a speed shrine and just try and poke them and force IM to engage in. But their power spike, like you're saying, has been significantly delayed. Mickey is very weak. He's had to go tier brutalizer. Not yeah. ideal for stacking that tier, and that's going to be quite a problem. He's down about, I think, 400 to 500 gold versus the Azir right now. So we'll see if Lyra decides to go to that mid lane to focus on, um, to shore that up a little bit. But meanwhile, the bottom lane pushing, as Sivir does. As Sivir does. But Paragon, you know, as he creeps closer to that Trinity Force, will be able to turn this around and match the wave clear a little bit. Mickey getting played very aggressively by Frozen. And it's simply because he's had to go for this sort of triage build with the early Brutalizer just so we can get a power spike uh, against the against the Azir, which is out farming him, has more kills than him as well. What do you do? Oh, oh all right, Sangyun gonna go in. Ignar just gonna back off Snowflower low. Ignar continuing forward there. We see a miss Tibbers oh. after the flash from Sangyun, but they got both summoners out of Sangyun right there. So 
So that is definitely definitely worth definitely a worthwhile trade, even though they couldn't finish the kill off. I mean, that Tibbers was mainly used for damage because as he used it, that's when his stun came up. So. Okay, especially coming in right here. Equalizer goes down, and there is Lyra to counter gank, and Tucson not really going to find much in that top side, and it can be rough. They were they were trying to make that play. They have no wards in the top side jungle right now. They have no wards even really in those lane brushes. So Lyra could have been anywhere, very sloppy. All the wards right now are pretty much on from Rebels Anarch. And Mickey, is he gonna die? Ooh, <laughs> close tussle. Flash for flash, mid lane. But in the end, Frozen wins because he just gets to pick up even more farm. Yeah, and he still has disengage tools. Mickey. What's he gonna do? Yeah, lacking those. Without the flash, he's that much more vulnerable. So Anarchy trying to get some wards into the enemy jungle right now, taking that opportunity when they know that Frozen will be backing. They want the next dragon. This is what this is what tells uh, what indicates to me what uh, Anarchy wants to do. They want that dragon. They get the wards down. They get to set up, like you said, in order to just poke, 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 and maybe try to win a team fight after that. Yeah, it's still going to be a long shot, though. Mm -hmm. Paragon coming up on that Trinity Force. Sangyun very far away from an Infinity Edge. Expression. He's getting close to Sheen. I think he has some money to spend. Maybe uh, or not. Or well, he probably not. Back. He just came back. So Frozen, Ooh. not going to get hooked right there. Had no flash, but he does have those Sand Soldiers to hop to and mm -hmm. escape. And now Tucson starting to respond a minute early with some warding of their own. And with, just like that, I am has position. Yeah, this is, I mean, Anarchy, they're, they're trying to stack two tiers right now. This isn't the best time for them to be fighting. Uh, they don't have really any carry potential out of any champion besides Ixu's Rumble. He's in a good place in terms of his power right now. So looks like they're thinking about doing something top lane. Then what do you suggest? Oh, bottom lane, big fight. Yeah, there we go. Sivirult is pop. Paragon moves forward with the Flash and the Valk, and that's going to be a kill for him as his lane is doing quite well upon his return. And they're going to keep pushing. So you have you have Anarchy, who has each lane has somewhat decent wave clear. You have the Vars that can clear waves fairly easily. You have the Sivir. You have Rumble, who can has the AOE. Then what? Maybe just give up the. Uh oh, dragon. and there's Mickey gets caught out by another explosive cast. Frozen bounces him out, takes him down even through the chain of corruption. Sorry guys, our cameras. Uh, there's so much action. Our camera getting here a little bit late today, and now that's going to be an easy dragon. They know that Lyra was just on the top side of the map. And maybe it's a mid lane tower, but Lyra is trying to shore up, trying to save that um, tower. So the tower goes down. He is not in a good place, though. Just has a Mage's Enchant and a tier, so he cannot take any of that poke damage from the Azir. Right. But meanwhile, turret went down. Turret still stays alive for Rebels Anarchy, so one of the turrets but still down in kills. Yeah, this is looking quite good for IM right now. Uh, even though they lost the top lane tower as part of that trade, it just blowing on that bottom lane turret will knock it over. Yeah, and it's only a 200 gold, 200, 300 gold lead for Long Zhu IM, but it's Rebels Anarchy that <laughs> wanted that gold lead. They need a gold lead in order to be able to close out the game. and and they're just, they just don't have it. Yeah, just the Muramana, or uh, Manamune rather, coming up right now for Mickey, late into this game. And now, this is this is the siege that they need to get rolling, but again, they have Sivir. Sivir not the best synergy with Varus, especially compared to a champion like Corky or right. even Lucian. That shorter auto attack range does increase the difficulty of sieging. But maybe they want to shore up Varus' uh, weakness in terms of mobility with yeah. Sivir's ult. So the synergy is there, but maybe not just for Siege. So. Yeah. Yeah. It just it, it has to come in the form of kiting. And meanwhile, as we're seeing right now, those two turrets about to go down, and that is going to be the big gold lead when it happens that IM was looking for to complement their 2-0 dragon start. Expression. Oh, Taking man, that looks familiar. Oh, boy. Taking all the buffs. <laughs> Invading all the jungles. There's a flash Tibbers and Paragon on top of him immediately. Foss bomb and then knocked out by the explosive gas teleport coming in. Aixu already TP'd down, but he's going to have to run. Sand Soldiers preventing him from doing much of anything. 
Expression comes down to the bottom side. Maybe didn't need to complete that teleport. Got to wonder. Right. The problem is that, you know, Anarchy wants to be the one that dictates the pace of the game, but they just can't. They just It's just really difficult for them. And, you know, Long Zhu I am just comes in with the Annie stun, they come in with their hard engage, and there's just no way for them to set up any sort of siege. They're weaker too, so it's not like they can um, bully their way into a siege situation. And that was perfect, like you're saying, for, for IM, because basically Anarchy has to group. They must. And so the pick potential from IM with all their crowd control is so incredibly high that if they're caught in the middle of a rotation like we just saw down into the bottom side, uh, they will lose those little skirmishes in spite of having this Nidalee here. We go, oh, oh, nice. And there's the depth charge. Ignar looks like he will be going down. Minik Mickey finishes him off with a piercing arrow. Good pick. Maybe they'll need 10 more of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will need quite a few more, I think, if they really want to capitalize. Because at the end of the day, they killed the support, but there's nothing to be done in terms of actually taking a tower. Look they at that vision, though, in the bottom side jungle. Yeah. Par Paragon has to be careful, that's for sure. But you can have that vision, mm -hmm. but what happens when there's nothing you can really do with it? Right. And that tower still has quite a bit of HP. Now they could try and dive this. Ignar's coming mid. It's doable. Chain of Corruption onto Frozen. There we go. And oh. what a nice uh, Azir ultimate right there. Equalizer down. Frozen gonna fall, but oh, Mickey no. finds himself in the back line. Two for one. Mickey and Snowflower pay as Frozen uses the cleanse to get out of the chain of corruption and turn it around in the mid lane. They thought Ignar may be going back into the bottom side. No, he was not. He was waiting. He was lurking. I mean, it, it looked like a good idea. It looked. I, I thought that they might get, you know, take Frozen and then get out scot-free, but Frozen played that very well, too. He pushed the right people back. Song Yoon, ult. Flash as Paragon with that Trinity Force comes into the bottom side. Song Yun just has, well, he has the Infinity Edge now, but. Oh. Uh, oh. Ignar is just everywhere with Tucson. And look at that. Mobutsu mobility with the Distortion Enchant. So early. So early in this game to have the Distortion Enchantment. And he's going to have that Righteous Glory sooner or later as well. So it's just going to make, you know, Anarchy's life even tougher. And he's quite rich this game. So let's take a look at this one again. Frozen, there's the cleanse. And he will push Snowflower and Lyra back. Look, he's not standing on the equalizer, just taking damage from Mickey's Varus. And then there, Mickey just gets bounced yeah. in. Stunned up, bounced in. I mean, you can't blame Anarchy for trying that. It no, they have to do something right now because right. they're at the point where they are going to lose their entire outer ring of turrets in just a matter of seconds. Mid very low, top very low, expression still putting on the pressure, and that gold swing is going to be massive. Tibbers back up, flash back up almost soon. A very good position for this dragon in spite of the lack of teleport on their top laner. Expression just doing his expression things and putting that pressure on the top side. Dragon up in 45 seconds though. So if Anarchy do want to try to maybe poke them out, and Recall's coming out from Long as I am. They know it's coming up, they want to set up. Yeah, they do, so this will be the end of the top lane. Mickey not gonna get the blue buff, that'll be handed to Lyra. Makes sense. I mean, you have you, uh, you have uh, Lyra who can throw out Spears, which still does a great amount of damage with the, Ma with the Megas enchant. Yeah, it'd be better if he had that Seraph's complete, but he doesn't have the money for that yet, even though his tier is probably very close to being fully stacked, if it's, if it's not already. Uh, looks like it is, actually. He's pouncing around and it's not stacking, so. That is ready to turn into a Seraphs as soon as he can get home, but he's not gonna have a chance before this dragon fight really unfolds. Two for two, the towers now. And I feel like this is the dragon you might not want to give up, especially with the extra movement speed on the entirety of IM. And they're already hard engaging onto your onto your uh, composition. You don't want them to do it even faster. Yeah, that is, You are. I think you're right. That speed buff, really a danger in this particular circumstance. Okay, so IM has the priority on that objective right now. They do not have the speed shrine. If, if Anarchy manages to find a fight in the choke, I think they can win it. If they win, if they fight in a choke. Yeah, if they if they get into a place where they can really land a lot of that poke, but uh, you can see right now, I am is just not committing. They're all spread out. They're fanned out. Ignore, well, except for a frozen paragon, are going to get hit by one piercing arrow at the same time. Ooh. 
Ooh, Ignar dodging everything. Those boots of mobility, man. <laughs> Call him Neo. <laughs> That's right. Bullet dodging. So they clear out that mid lane wave. Ooh. Very close. Expression, I mean, there's there's also true two Trinity forces on the side of Incredible Miracle. So they have a lot of extra movement speed for dodging these skill shots. And they looks like they're gonna take it. Yep. Take it. Clean acquisition. Are they gonna go oh. in right now? There's the timbers onto Snowflower. Equalizer goes down on the backside. There's Chain of Corruption. Frozen just gonna cleanse that. Snowflower still low, but he's gonna get out. Frozen with the Zonia's Hourglass. He gets cooked by Ixu right as he comes out. Time has to be careful. Yeah, they're coming oh. out. Nice flash. Ixu moves forward. Paragon has Valkyrie, and he is going to leave the battle unscathed. And there we go. So they, so they get the dragon, but they give up two kills. And maybe potentially the mid turret, which is going to go down now. Maybe the mid tier two? Yeah, probably the mid tier two, actually. They have the double AD carry, and they have the attack speed buff from Nidalee's heal. So that's going to be a pretty fast kill on the tower. So ooh, very big trade in favor of Anarchy. They finally find their gold lead. A little under 2K, and we're going to see that fight again. So I am already a little bit poked out right there. Tibber's kind of wasted on Snowflower, honestly. And Expression gets the depth charge, so he's not able to auto attack during his heat tent style. Frozen tries to turn this one around, but everybody was already poked by Mickey. Their back line had been poked out by Varus, thanks to Mickey's good positioning. Right. And then you just get that spear, just the cleanup coming in afterwards. I mean, well fought by Anarchy. Yeah, they, they did a good job finding that angle finally to get the piercing arrow. It's just unfortunate that they had to give up the dragon for that. Yeah, that's that's the big factor right here. Did they get enough of a lead, 500 gold, and they're still down three dragons to zero? There's a pretty big timer on this game, and I'm a little bit concerned for them. Mickey has recovered nicely at the very least, in spite of being 1-4-3, and three, does have all the armor penetration he needs alongside the Mana Mune. Still no Muramana. No. I mean, once once the Annie has that Righteous Glory, that engage just from the Fog of War is just going to be so godly and from Long Zhu I am. So it's just, they need to press their advantage right now, whatever little bit they have. But yeah. they just want to farm. They just, I mean, they. Just, I guess they just don't have the requisite vision to make sure they can make those plays. No, they don't. And they can't walk forward either because you're dealing with these this advancing wall of wards from Incredible Miracle that are in your jungle. You have no wards in the enemy jungle if you're Anarchy, which means you cannot seize these tier twos in top or bottom without the threat of a very large flank coming through and nailing you to the wall. So this is a very... Difficult situation for Anarchy to be in. They have to face check, basically, so oh. I am may be able to exploit this. So we might see a Baron Bake here. Definitely a good plan. You have you have an Annie, and you have a Gragas. And you have an Expression. <laughs> you have an Expression to split push, so. Absolutely. Setting up a Baron Bait, a good idea. No one also on Anarchy actually farming right now. Right. They're only farming out of that mid lane. Meanwhile, they three up. lanes being farmed by Incredible Miracle. They also gave up position on the Baron, so no more baiting for now. Well, they gave it up, but the price was, hey, farm. we're going to get farm. You're losing. You're going to lose a bunch into the turret, or you're going to have to split up, and we're going to charge down your tier two. So you can see right now, I am just starting to group and push back. Now they know that those side waves have to be cleared Ooh. so they can reverse some of the pressure in the mid lane. Expression with the nice flank, but nothing comes of it. Oh, it may. Let's see what Ixu does right here. Ixu sees the Annie. Oh, oh no, Tibbers comes down. Expression with the follow up stun with that equilibrium strike, and he dies thanks to the transcendent blades. Just very dangerous to be farming right there. A lot of damage onto Paragon from the Equalizer, though, so they have to be careful. They can get poked out if they're not, if they're not cautious here. Lyra coming up from behind. They still have enough HP. Paragon has Summoner Heal if he but needs to use it. They see Tucson behind them, which is ter Oh, God. Yeah, Lyra just gets jumped on by Ignar and Tucson. He does end up living, and he actually gets a kill wow. onto Expression. There's the knockback, though, and everyone in the range of the Sand Soldiers. Frozen can't be hit in that Zonia's, and now he's going to send his soldiers over the wall. Just more pokes. Snowflower, is he barely going to live? Paragon has to back off as Lyra throws some more spears his way. 
So one for one, but Anarchy really isn't going to get any control back out of that skirmish. Great Emperor's Divide in the middle of that yeah. fight. It just ensure that the, it looked so bad for Long Zhu IM when it started, and then just Frozen managed to just turn it on its head. Yeah. Great play. That was very well executed, at least in terms of Azir play and controlling the zones. Azir also going to get a blue buff. Before this dragon spawns, I am looking for number four. They really just want to keep on chugging, but they have to get some vision over Baron first. They don't have any wards over there. That's not a trade you want to make. Ignar already there to do just that. Can't take out the port though, with Snowflower lurking in that riverside, uh, the mid lane river brush. Well, the shot calling for I am has generally been pretty good so far this game. They definitely have managed to keep an eye on all of the appropriate objectives and make sure that they do things methodically, like getting this barren vision first, and including maybe even that Scuttle Crab. That would be very valuable for them, actually, because that's something that Anarchy isn't going to be able to clear while this dragon is going down. They also have the deep wards in around the dragon in the bottom side. Yeah, I mean, they brought in two longtime veterans in Expression and Paragon, so, I mean, maybe that helped short up their shot calling. Like, this could be a different facet to why they brought these two players in. Yeah, definitely could. Oh, but oh. that poke is coming in. Tucson getting Tucson stung. really going to go in. There's the oh. explosive cast. Miski already flanked by Expression and stunned right there. Flash used by Expression on that engage. Now they're going to turn onto this dragon. Without Mickey, they're just not going to have the poke necessary to follow up on another engagement. And the Doomsday Park just keeps ticking. Yeah, that's it. That is probably going to be it. Yes, we are even in gold. In fact, Anarchy has that slight lead, but this game is not looking very winnable from their perspective right now. When you consider uh, their team composition and what they would have to do to get back into it. So what do you think was a turning point in this game? Like, what really swung it into Long Zhu IM's favor? Because I think the, the laning phase with Mickey was really quite quite poor from them. And I think it's the early kills on the Mickey just totally stunted their, their timing window and made it so they didn't actually ever have a true power spike with this Varus. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it was a good composition. I like the idea of it, especially with the way Ix is building. He built a Rylize into a Zonia, so he's creating this zone. Him and Snowflower are just trying to create this big slow field that um, that Longsword have, would have to wade through. And it, I, they understand their composition. It's just they just couldn't execute it in the early game. Right, and the the reality of this composition is if you play like this, you all, you are assuming you are going to have priority positioning around Dragon, particularly. Right. You have to get there first. You have to have the better vision. And it works wonderfully if you have these things. Like you're saying, there's so much slow, you're going to be able to kite. I am is not going to be able to engage you satisfactorily. And eventually, your 280 carries are going to make short work of the, of the enemy front line. But that said, you start falling behind, and you, you're not playing from a place where you have where you have the positioning right in front of the objective, and you have a lot of problems. You get bled out, and Expression split pushing, gonna take this bottom tier two, and Anarchy goes for the Desperation Baron. Yeah, truly desperate at this point in time. Tusa just gonna throw a barrel in there. He sees what's going on. Everyone knows there's a Righteous Glory pop, more poke coming in. And then they delay the Baron? No, it's still, it's still taking TP, it. TP, and here we go. Tucson wants to make short work of this, especially coming in. He's got in the front line right now. Who is he going to get on? Is he going to commit to this? No, oh. I am just going to steal it away, and that is probably going to be in Snowflower quite low right now. Ixu, he is Zonia's in the front line. Ignar finds a double stun onto Sangyun and Mickey. That's going to cut off a lot of their damage, and here we go. Frozen's oh. going in. He gets the kill, and now... Frozen moving forward, more Sand Soldiers. Ignar steals it out from under his nose. Frozen deserved that triple kill. <laughs> he deserved it. He did. Frozen has definitely been a major factor in what is likely going to be a win here for Incredible Miracle. Expression snapping up that top wave. He needs all the CS. Yeah, I mean, it's not looking great. Mickey low on mana, too, so they're not going to be able to defend this, especially with the Baron buff minions coming down the mid lane. But will they be able to defend an inhibitor is the question. Yeah, and 
Man, let's take a look at this again. Uh, this was just so low, and look at that. Azir and Tucson on that Graga, so easily able to steal it after Anarchy has to give up that positioning, and double stun right there. Mickey has cleanse, so he gets out of it, but that's Tibbers just clogging the choke point. And right. there's, I mean, Song Yun and Mickey did so little damage over the course of that team fight, thanks to the zoning provided from Ignar. Yeah, Ignar played that fantastically well, but they, like, the problem was that they gave up that Baron, just, they just moved back and they were really afraid of that engage. I mean, should they have pretended that they were in Texas and stood their ground? <laughs> That's, I mean, they could have, but they're so squishy that I think you're likely dealing with the same situation. But I'm not sure you could actually start the Baron under those circumstances. Right. Well, Azir nearing five item status. Oh boy, uh, Frozen really doing a good job this game. And, and looking forward, I have to question Mickey on Varus because who is going to carry this team? If we look at Anarchy's wins, so many of them are Mickey killing the enemy backline if it's in a team fight right. or it's in Mickey making picks on assassins. It's why the Zed was banned. Okay. Oh, uh, nice flash. But yeah. Lyra has the QSS, so he's able to get out of that situation. Especially using his flash to hop over the wall right there. Fast fingers from Lyra. But this Baron buff still going to be extraordinary. Oh. Wow. Frozen over the wall. And that is Mickey just instantly dying. Paragon going to go down as well as he dives the turret a little bit too deep. But Ixu finds himself in the middle. Frozen with another kill. Frozen making the plays. Frozen making the plays. And that's probably going to be, the, be this top inhibitor going down. Yeah. With the turret. They've got the Cannon Minion right there. They're perfectly capable of tanking this out and burning it down with the help of the Sand Soldiers from Azir. And that is going to be a quick kill on the inhibitor. Sheen there too, courtesy of Aurelia. And then they back off. Then Recall they, and buy. Then they back off. For, forever going back and just buying and then finishing the game. I am. Not too soon, though. <laughs> not too soon. He has to run away from the minion wave. Miscalculated that a little bit. But uh, I am as a team that hasn't been able to close games very well. But this game, they're actually doing an extremely good job uh, of closing, of forcing win conditions. Of course, that fifth dragon up in 20 seconds, I am going to have no real trouble getting there. But they don't have position. And Anarchy is set up. They, they see Sivir in the bottom side. They can just definitely just walk there as soon as four of them Get into, get into some sort of position right now. They're also going to see Mickey right there, now. That wave. Okay. So Dragon's live, and I am is there. And now they see them. They know exactly where a potential pick could come from, and they they lose position on this Dragon. Well, there's nothing they can do at this stage besides get that poke down. Nice damage onto Frozen early. Oh, what? Oh. Oh. Frozen like glitched around there a little <laughs> bit. Couldn't quite get all the way around that wall. The order was given, but was not followed <laughs> up on. Well, that's his fault. He was he was giving the order to himself because his sand soldiers weren't really involved and they there. they give up this fifth dragon. I don't know about this. They can definitely fight. Chain of Corruption onto Tuzit. There's an equalizer right in the choke. Paragon finds himself in flame spitter range. He can't get out thanks no to the Rylize, but Expression is all oh over my. Mickey in the back line. Song Yoon finds himself unable to do anything if he had flashed if he had even had the flash, there were sand soldiers on the other side of the wall. Expression just carved a <laughs> bloody swath through that team. It was, that was actually very, like, that was rated R right there. <laughs> this is uh, definitely a good play to get back into the enemy carry line. And now I am just going to use a little bit of a speed boost here with the Talisman of Ascension to finish off the game. Super Minions already going to be beating at the door of the Nexus, and Lyra gets stunned. Oh. Paragon is there, wants the kill, going to get the kill, has to flash out of the tower, but that's going to be it. A pretty clean win for Incredible Miracle with some new players on the roster really delivering in game one. The shot calling was a lot better than we've seen from them in the past. And it was crisp, it was decisive. They knew exactly what they wanted. They knew how to win. They knew what the weaknesses of Anarchy were completely different I am from what we're used to seeing. Yeah, and Anarchy 2, different from them, is do, is Mickey the guy you want on a Varus on your team? It's not that he can't play Varus or that he wasn't hitting a lot of those skill shots. It's just how do you win if you're Anarchy? They're still going to have that 
Zed ban. They want it, and they do want it, and why wouldn't you want it? I am I am scared of, of Mickey Zed, and I'm not even playing in the game. It is too fine. And also, guys, remember to vote for your super favorite super play this week. Helps out the players. That's right. OGN.Azuba.TV, and there is an Ari ban. I love IM's bans this time. Now that they have an extra ban or two on the blue side, they are going to just use it to decimate and uh, Mickey's viable assassin pool. And if he goes on Cassidy, if he goes on the Varus again, even if he goes on Victor, guess what's going to happen? They're going to camp him, just like well, last game. Well, what do you do? I mean, we could see some, there's some mages that have that kind of backline threat that, um, that could be put out. Like, for example, I mean, Ziggs hasn't been changed. I'm a big Ziggs. I'm a big proponent of Z uh, Ziggs, but... Um, he hasn't been played. He can do a great amount of damage to the backline, and if that's the kind of the thing that Mickey wants to do, he doesn't have to physically go there to do the damage, too. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good point. Ziggs, the, the falling off of Ziggs has been a bit interesting, especially when wave clear is a pretty big priority in the current meta, and there is going to be an Annie ban. No surprise, you do want to take that out. Alistair and Gragas, I am getting one of them. Yeah. I mean, we'll see if Anarchy kind of, kind of took a step back, and thought about what they what went wrong at least, and they could they could feasibly go for the same type of composition that they did in game one, but they would just have to play around the mid lane better. Yeah, I, I agree. And my question here: Do you just not? I think you just don't ban either. Yeah, ban the Sivir. You don't ban Alistair and Gragas. You want to make sure you get one of them. So the Sivir is not going to be able to be used by Anarchy in this game. So a lot of that hard engage has fallen by the wayside, and I love it. Just take the Alistair immediately. And if I'm I am as a team, I prioritize the support picks over the jungle picks. And the reason why is that Ignar has a 77% kill contribution. He's number five overall in the league. He is the guy you really want to play around. Him and Frozen are the guys that you can rely on to be contributors to this IM team. So take the Alistair. Give it to Ignar, who's been the one making the plays, and let Tucson pick more reactively. Okay, and Tucson picks Rek'Sai in return into, uh, into the Gragas. Yeah, you have two early game junglers up. Of course, Lyra is very good at that Gragas, and the Azir will be taken oh. once more by Frozen. Blind pick Irelia. Well, they're saying, what else can Expression play? What else can he play? Well, it's a good you know idea. what? I'm pretty sure anybody can play Maokai, so. <laughs> Maybe not expection, who knows? Well, Ash and Renekton are the hovers right now. Jax, Ignar's just trolling. <laughs> Going back to that classic Irelia Jax matchup, possibly in the top lane. I would say probably not, but you you know what? You never know, Barry. You never know, you just go full season three here, full season two. Those were the days when Aurelia got nerfed out of every other patch. <laughs> but Tristana would be interesting. Yeah, Tristana it provides so much siege and turret pressure, though. I would like to see uh, Lucian from Sunstar again. Just get the bully lane, try and win that out. You still have great siege with the Azir, but you have more early game threat. So, potentially for Rebels Anarchy. That could be a mid lane Aurelia, potentially. You are actually not lying. That is, I had not considered that possibility. That is the matchup that Faker likes to play Aurelia into, Barry. You are correct, and it is going to be Jax from Expression. Oh, yeah. Now, we have to think about the Jax. Will it be the Teleport Smite Jax that Shy decided to play in spring? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't think Probably so. Not. I Probably think you have to play Flash with Jax the way he is right now. And there is a hover over the Yasuo. So we have the Yasuo hover. Uh, I, yeah, you're absolutely right. This could definitely be a mid lane Aurelia. If you want a champion that can get into the back lines, maybe Anarchy has figured this out. Maybe they say, we do need Mickey back there, causing that disruption on the carries. Aurelia is a great way to do it. And Aurelia, again, that was the matchup Faker played. He right. played Aurelia into Kuro's Azir, and it was, I'm not going to say it was really successful. But the concept was there, and it is mid Aurelia. Yeah. And they have a lot of backline threat now. Rumble, Equalizer, 
landing on that back line. They have isolation from Gragas too for the Aurelia to get into the skirmishes. So Anarchy's comp, I think, is relatively solid. It's also nicely balanced between physical and magic damage. So and they also have Snowflower back on that Thresh. Yes. Which is a great, great pickup for him. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, when Faker did it, he played well in the team fights, played well in the skirmishes. Obviously, a lot of synergy with that Gragas uh, in the mid game, but he wasn't. He didn't really get much out of the laning phase. He just went even. This is also a very similar composition that SKT ran when they played yeah. the mid Aurelia with, with the Aurelia with the Corky, the double Trinity Force um, power spike. So if they can sync that up with the Rumble mid game spike too, yeah, right. it's, it's going to be very very strong. Yes, I totally agree with you. And I am. They're pretty item dependent, but there could be some interesting stuff in the top lane. Now they pick the Jax. Jax Rumble, I don't think this is the matchup that they got baited into this by thinking it was Aurelia. Yeah. They definitely got baited into this. Of course, Jax is able to shrug off a lot of Aurelia's damage during trades because he simply goes into Counter-Strike when Aurelia is dealing true damage and you can't hit him and then therefore he just stuns you at the end and then then yeah. autos you. So that is, uh, that is going to be a much different matchup and we haven't seen Jax this season so far. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Well, let's get into the game. Two, I am versus Anarchy. Uh, here we go. I am all stacking up on the top side at the moment, looking to get a bit of a wacky invade down. Are they going to be able to catch anybody? Ixu doesn't Ooh. know that anyone's there yet, especially creeping in. He's safe. Yeah, they don't. Oh, oh wow. wow. Flash pull that they're going to go straight into a stun while Ixu is dead to rights. Uh, that, was a, that was a bold shot call there from I am. They yeah. wanted to start using those flashes immediately. Flash for the pull and the exhaust. Frozen also deciding to use his exhaust. Tucson level W for yes. that extra knockup. Yep. Which could be very problematic. It, it depends on what kind of leash he gets. I absolutely agree with you, but you can definitely still... I was actually watching this earlier today in a similar level 1 situation with a Rek'Sai, and it's not, it's not as damaging as you might think. It's okay. definitely not great, but as long as you have an adequate leash, you will be okay. Now, we do have the invade. Look at the ward pattern that IM has placed right here. They're making sure, we've seen this more and more in Korea, they now know with those four wards that there's not going to be any possibility of someone starting on the red side. You also see there's the check onto the Krugs right there. They Oh, that was actually a bad timing. So what happened was Alistair should have looked a little bit earlier uh, because he actually got seen by the minion wave while he walked uh, past the Krugs. So he wasn't looking at where the minion wave was. He had to go there if he wanted to get the freeze, though. So yeah. that bit bit interesting situation, but this is uh, this is how you do it these days. If you want to uh, get an early steal, it's a, it's a level one boarding formation and strategy that actually just sh first showed up last week. Right. So very new. This kind of jungle pathing reminds me of the earlier season four, the four v zero kind of like the push because like you see both of these, the jungle and the top follow starting in the bottom side on the stronger side rather, and then they just transition that straight into a four v zero push. Oh, oh. what? And there we go, Mickey getting poked out, especially with the lead bin. Lyra's there, especially close, doesn't get hit by the body slam. She's going to try and turn oh, no. this one around. Lyra low, there we go. Leap strike, but there's just no stun to follow up. Expression already used it. They got the flash out of Mickey. And you have to wonder, if Lyra had committed to that with, with a own. flash uh, on the body slam, I think Anarchy would have gotten a kill. Yeah, no, definitely. Maybe their nerves have been rattled a bit from <laughs> the last game. You never know with these. I think they definitely could have gotten Expression and taken the red buff away from him because it was given over to him. Uh, so... Bit of a bit of a curious little skirmish right there. No one really wanting to go all in in a situation where I think more all in would have been rewarded. But in the end, uh, cautiously, will cost Mickey his summoner and not very much used on the side of Incredible Miracle. Yeah. And it, it, it's also worth noting that Anarchy has a pretty all in composition. So if they had all in at that point, pretty good. 
Yeah, I think you. I think they will have turned that one around quite easily. Expression got way too close to that brush. So we see Snowflower and Lyra trying to hover around the mid lane because they know Mickey's flash is down. So set up a possible counter pick, uh, counter, uh, counter gank. But Snowflower is losing a lot of experience for, uh, for, for, uh, by doing this, though. Yeah, he is not in lane right now. I mean, let's see what Ignar gets. Uh, Snowflower, like you're saying, still only level one. Ignar level two, and now. Heading into lane as a three-man unit. They don't know where Anarchy is, so they send their jungler and support down with the top laner just to make sure that they're going to be safe from any kind of dive or aggression. And, Anar and Anarchy sees I am move through the bottom side of the jungle with that nicely placed ward at Krugs. Yep. Uh, let's see what they can get here. Into the bottom side, there is Pings. Onto the blue buff, but they will be disappointed. They're not going to find anything. That side of the jungle's already been cleared out. Lyra is not seen yet. Sonstar all by his lonesome, and this could be a dive. Sonstar going to dash out, and there's the play. TP oh. immediately there, and here comes Expression. Can they finish this off? Snowflower low. Expression just going to hop in, and there's the stun. Ixu on the run with the scrap shield, but there's no follow-up. The scuffle still here. Frozen trying to pinch in. And here he comes. There is Expression with the leap strike, but Snowflower actually flashes it. So Expression just lands where the flash started, not where it ended. Frozen gets a nice roam and some more damage off, but that was parried pretty deftly by Incredible Miracle. Problem is, Tucson's the one getting the experience <laughs> from this large creep wave since he TP'd into the top lane. So an advantage for Tucson, but that is some farm that Expression really needed. They have right. to punish Ixu now because he can't be allowed to get this wave. There is the flash from Ixu. Ignar wants the headbutt into the wall. Is there enough damage? Exhaust is going to make sure there is. Scrap Shield still ticking, but he's going to fall underneath the turret. Ignar with the play, the mini stun into the wall, followed by the pulverized Expression finally using his flash. Wait a long time. Yeah. Doesn't get the kill, though. That goes over to the cow. He still he still has two assists, which is pretty good if you're in, uh, if you're a Jax that wants to you know get to that Trinity Force, Blade of the Ruin King into like that unkillable god status. So, but meanwhile we have something brewing in the mid lane. Yeah, so Flower the hook, beautiful hook right to the the Sand Soldier. That's gonna blow the flash, but nothing else. Frozen still holds on to his exhaust. Snowflower, nice prediction. So we have a nice disparity here with the flashes. Like Mickey, <laughs> Mickey's flash will come up, and I expect that, and I'm pretty sure I am will expect that. Um, Anarchy will try to make a play right around the mid lane. So I think we're going to see probably a lot more action, probably in the next two minutes. Yeah, it really is going to turn into a little bit of a mind game here when it comes to ganking and counter ganking around this mid lane and also the top lane. We're going back to standard lanes right now, which means that we have. A flashless Rumble and a flashless Jax, both pretty vulnerable champions yeah. to gank in the top side. So whoever controls the vision around the top side right now, we take a look at the warding, and that's IM. Should have a pretty big advantage. Look at uh, Tucson now just walking back into the enemy top side jungle. This is exactly where he needs to be right now. I mean, you see, well, from judging from the way the top lane is going, you see Rumble up about 15. 14 CS, 13 CS, so he's, he's he's up there. He's getting the advantage, and he's caught. He knows that there's going to be something coming his way soon. Too. Yeah, there there absolutely has to be, but Jax with that low wave clear can just freeze it right next to the turret. Well, he has the ward to defend himself. Rift Scholar going to go over. Yeah, and he cleared out the pink ward in the tri brush, so that's one more. A little bit of a relief that he has. Tucson went and stole the red the enemy team since they had the timer on it from the first spawn. Both AD carries at level 6 as well. Oh, there we go. A little trade and there's the lantern. He's going to pull it back in. Snowflower getting oh. very low. Snowflower, what are you doing, buddy? Staying there way too long. Uh, Sonya going to try and turn this around. Ignite ticking on a Sonstar. He's going to try and dodge through some of this. Nice. Ignar, beautiful kill. Sonyun going to actually get a double right here. Oh, oh the plays. <laughs> The headbutt flash into the pulverize to lock Song Yun under the tower. Lyra wants to finish it off, but he's going to have to content himself with a pink ward. Great turnaround from Ignar. 
Wow. Snowflower really knowing his limits, too. I mean, he ate an almost full culling. The funny thing is he started that fight at level three. He's now level five. He's gained two levels <laughs> from that exchange. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was a fantastic play from Ignar. Well, two good plays. I was I was very surprised Snowflower was able to get out of that because we look at this, and there's the Phosphorus Bomb down. So they try and go in. Snowflower body blocks about two-thirds of the culling, and he dashes forward. Snowflower, though, baits him in, and Song Yoon starts getting the damage down alongside that Ignite. He did a fall right there to the play, and Song Yoon at the same time going to... Ooh, beautiful. Great beautiful. Play. Just let max turret range, too. And meanwhile, in the top lane... That is a dead rumble. Poor Yordles. Well. Yeah, well, they are poor because they don't get a chance to farm because they're dead, Barry. <laughs> they're dead. You have the Grandmaster <laughs> at arms against a rumble, against, against a Yordle and a machine. Oh. Oh, and Snowflop looking for the hook. And it comes the teleport, flashes out. Wow, they're really committing for this, especially wants to go. He slowed up. Not sure about that TP. Ixu yeah. going to have a very large TP advantage now. Question is, can Anarchy delay until Ixu's TP is up around this dragon? I wants to take it. They're going to get the Rumble TP up and operational. Still no equalizer. I think I am going to play more aggressively around that around that dragon. I think they could have taken that dragon. Yeah, they should have just gone for it. But maybe they weren't 100% sure on Ixu's teleport timing, so... Well, but Ixu's teleport is... They are 100% sure on his ultimate timing. Right. And that's really what's going to turn things around. Still only a couple of phages so far on Anarchy, so it's not like they're in a giant power spike yet. And Sonstar has also itemized for the early game. Pickaxe into Brutalizer, so he's in a nice power spike compared to the Corky at the moment. I think they definitely had the position and the time to get that Dragon. Tusa coming in. Play. Nice. Oh, Snowflower. Exhaust. Body block. And there we go. Flash on Burrow. Song Yoon going to fall. Double kill. And the double kill for Tucson. And that's surely the dragon going to go over there. One would hope that this is going to be the dragon. It's like Song Yoon just sticking around for a little bit longer to push up the wave at the bottom side. Expression still in top. Remember, the TP's oh, back up. Mickey kind of getting outplayed here by Frozen Exhaust. He can't move. Ignar's coming in. He wants that combo. Expression combo, to combo, combo, combo. There it is. Pulverized Sand Soldier and death for Mickey. Well played. So I am just kind of comprehensively outplaying Anarchy on the map right now. We saw that kill from Expression in the top lane. And you know what, Barry? This is sort of what was lacking from Incredible Miracle, was having enough individual playmakers on this roster. But And Tucson also being a little bit uncomfortable with the transition to the jungle. But now that they have such confidence from players like Ignar Frozen and Expression, they're really kind of just laying into Anarchy right here. And this Jax... This Jax is getting scary. Yeah, no. He's going to have his Sheen soon, once he bats, most likely. And then that's going to lead into Triforce. We'll see if he goes into Blade or if he goes straight into tank stats. But I don't think he... He might not need it. He might not need the Blade this game. Yeah, he he may not. I'm curious if he's going to, like you said, go for the Blade or go straight into a Randuins after he's finished. Uh, it's kind of a, a very weird race for Trinity Forces right now because whoever finishes theirs first and can actually force an engagement should have a, a substantial edge. Yeah, but let's not count out Anarchy just yet. They Once they have, like, like you said, the Trinity Forces come in, they have this big power spike. If they can win maybe two good team fights, then they're back in control. Yes, that is definitely the case, but they, they're definitely fighting a an uphill battle to do it, considering they're already down 3k gold. Looks like they're going to take a turret, though. Lucian went for, is going to be going for the Ghost Blade. And gets gets some position back underneath. Feels confident that he's not going to get dove anymore, so he does return to pick up a little bit of that CS. Ixu on the top side, though, you can see having to play very far back. He is quite afraid yeah. of what could be happening to him against this Jax as the Jax starts to ramp up. This build interests me, because he got the pickaxe, at least for Lucian. He got the pickaxe, he's going to go into Yomu's Ghost Blade. Is he trying to match the Trinity Force power spike with his own Yomu's Ghost Blade? I don't know, and there we go, Ignar coming in, ult. There's the knockup, followed by another knockup, Tucson and Ignar. Just CCing Anarchy's dual lane, they find themselves trapped together, another nice engage. Ignar's going to have a CC back up in just a second. Goodbye. That's a 
another kill for this Lucian. Well played, well played. Yeah, a lot of kills going over to Sonstar in this matchup. And I mean, Snowblower and Sungyun just grouping up against the knockup CC. Now the Equalizer gonna go down. Expression pops his ultimate. He's going to not, oh, he does get the stun on Delir. Is there enough follow-up? He's dodging. He's just barely out of range of this Flame Spitter. Frozen coming down. This is not gonna be something that Anarchy's able to follow up on as he leap strikes to his Trinket Ward over the wall. But that's a blue buff gone, and is, I mean, is, is it? Here? Is it? Is it a blue buff gone? I prefer to think of it as a blue buff traded. Barry. Right, but you want it on your mid laner, right? So I, I prefer to think that Frozen's gonna walk to the enemy blue buff and take it right now. Could he? Oh yeah, that's, oh wow, <laughs> they're leashing you for him. <laughs> you had me, you got me. <laughs> wow. Always one eye on the minimap, that's me. So your eyes just point in different directions, one on the broadcast feed, one on the nope, minimap. No, no, the key is you never actually look at the screen as an analyst, you just look at the mini-map, and then the play-by-play -play caster looks at the main screen, and then you look at the replays. See, I, the secrets. <laughs> Today I learned. Well, big wave pushing in to, the, to Mickey. Picks up some good farm. And Snowball coming for a big play, or not, walks away. Oh, that was close. <laughs> the mind games, when will he throw the hook, when will he not throw the hook? Well, Mickey's mid Aurelia not going as well as he would have hoped behind this Azir, not in terms of CS, but down with that kill. And the assist. And we see two Sheens on the side of Anarchy. Two Sheens, WTF, Barry. Mm, WTF, two Sheens. That's right. The only the only thing better there <laughs> would be a Charlie Sheen. <laughs> no, 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 no. He just I needs think, some tiger's think, blood in there. I think everyone disagrees with that statement. I don't know. Charlie Sheen is a it's role model we can all look up to. <laughs> <laughs> maybe then Snowball will land some books. <laughs> yeah, maybe he would. If only he worshipped Charlie Sheen. That is also not the way to land hooks for children. <laughs> well, we see a push. And yeah, Vicky okay. responding right now to Sin. Gets the best of him though, and there is Sonstar. He's going to fall, but that's a kill. There is expression with the teleport frag coming out of thin air to just jump on Mickey's head. His 360 no scope. Right there. <laughs> it was his 360 no scope. All right, and, well, um, I don't know. There's about no, this. there's no equalizer, so I'm not exactly sure that is necessary. He's going to just get bounced back right away. Ignar still has the unbreakable will. Pops that, and. Everyone trying to collapse. Pros is just going to take the mid lane turret in response. Sacrifice the Ignar for the mid lane turret. I would take that. Definitely man, worth it. Ignar still just going to drag out, out as long as it can, buy his team Ooh. some time. Nice uh. dodge from Tucson after the lantern brings well. Song Yoon in. But they trade a turret for that. Now, can they get top here? It's going to be the question. With of course, with Mickey back up, looks like they may be able to trade. Well, with this many recalls, I mean, I think they're going to take the top lane turret. The mid lane, well, they have the training force. Mickey does have the training force. We're in that power spike that Anarchy wanted to be in. Yes, but they enter this power spike at a 6K gold deficit, which yeah. basically is going to nullify it, unfortunately. And it's also, we have to consider, Expression is also a player with the Trinity Force right now. And the Trinity Force on Corky, I mean, Sonstar has Infinity Edge. So he didn't go straight for the Ghost Blade. He decided just to stack the gold on the Avarice Blade and get the Infinity Edge as fast as possible. Now, when we talk about no sword shoes, Corky with Trinity Force versus nearly Ghost Blade, Infinity Edge, Lucian, I'm going to take the Lucian here. And so this is this is a bit of a timing window missed from yeah. Anarchy, especially now that there are two dragons down. They're going to try and oh. fight Frozen, goes in. Awkward Emperor's Divide, Equalizer follows up. For Anarchy Tucson, way too deep, Jax. but there's Jax. How much can he do? Lots of bursts onto Ixu. He can't get into the back line. Sonstar too low to follow this up. Sangyun looking for rockets. Snowflower there, he's gonna flash Ooh. pull. Sangyun gets pushed forward. No finisher yet. Mickey falls to expression. And now Ignar just having a huge game. Flash, Counter-Strike, stun, there's another one. dead. Expression wants another one. Valk is up. And there's the Lantern, so no more kills for this Jax. But he does enough. Ignar has just been a monster this yeah, game. Yeah, he's playing so well for 
I mean, he played well in set one too as well. Like just the roaming plays, the roaming plays, his mechanical plays. This is such a solid pickup for I am, and and has been for the whole season. Yeah, and remember, Ignar is a rookie. And let's see here. Obviously, Snowflower going to take a little bit of damage with that calling. Good equalizer this time to try and turn it around. They grab two, sit, collapse on him immediately. Expression tries to get in, but he doesn't actually get much done at the start of this fight. Some damage down, but Song Yun still here at full HP. Now they're on the run, they're on the retreat, and I am knows that Snowflower's going to catch Ooh. up, so they just turn around. Song Yun gets way too far forward. Mickey tries to follow up, but Sonstar is there with that Infinity Edge doing a bunch of damage to this very squishy Aurelia. Remember, all she had was a Trinity Force. Yeah. Well, now she has a Glacial Shroud, but it might be too late. And Azir just does so much magic damage at this point, too. For all Anomicon, he's going in for the Luden's Echo right now. Could be Zonius. Zonius, maybe. Yeah, it could be Zonius. Yeah. In fact, eh, I actually don't know what that's going to be. I think the Zonius is a safer pick here, for sure, especially against the Aurelia, who's going to be trying to dive that back line. And if he wants to go in, uh, against the melee force of Rumble and Aurelia. I think probably the the, the Zonius is a better choice here. Okay. And Zonstar with his finished Yomu's Ghost Blade. Oh boy. He's, He's got the, the very painful cullings now. Oh man. Instead of just individual bullets, it's just a steady stream <laughs> of just lasers. Okay, well, Ixu gonna catch this wave. It looks like they're not going to put too much pressure on the top side right now. Meanwhile, Expression catches the bottom wave. They want to see how far Ixu's going to push this out so they can just kill him. He doesn't have his Zonius yet, so he can't go into stasis. Okay, goodbye, Ixu. That's it. Oh. I don't know if I would have even dropped Equalizer there, actually, because his death timer is only at about 30 seconds, and he has TP up, so maybe he could TP home guard Equalizer somewhere else on the map. I think the reasoning was that he slows him down, gets enough damage done, because Anarchy were trying to collapse. So maybe at least get something down so that the rest of his team can clean up. That's the only reasoning I could feasibly see, but Expression is just going to be a split pushing god. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that, it's that time in the game, isn't it? Yeah. Health Crystal next. Then, so we'll see. Probably going to be a Giant's Belt, mm -hmm. and then whether it's going to be something like War Mogs, uh, considering the mixed damage of Anarchy or a Rando and Zomen. We shall wait and see. No, I'm surprised there hasn't been a Baron play yet yeah. from LZIM. I mean, yes, it's only been a minute and a half since Baron spawned, but they also are 8,000 gold in the lead and can really bait it very nicely. Well, this is what differentiates teams like, you know, Long Zoo IM versus like SK Telecom, because SK Telecom would know right now that they have that 8,000 gold lead and go for the Baron because they know the other the opposing team can't do anything about it. So Long Zhu am much crisper shot calling today. Maybe still some more things <laughs> that they could, you know, catch up to in terms of SK Telecom. Maybe. Yes, yeah, that's, that's definitely true. And sure, Anarchy isn't the strongest opponent in this league, but at least IM is putting up a more dominant showing that we've seen from them in the past when they have looked very sloppy. I mean, this is the long zone we wanted to see when they came out of the qualifiers, the promotion yeah. tournament. They looked so dominant there, and then they yeah. just flopped. Yeah, they. I'm not sure what exactly happened in those in those promotions because uh, they turned it around, and that big upswing that we saw in their talent with all these new additions to their roster really wasn't panning out for them. So a little bit of a scuffle for barren control in the river. I mean, the longer Long Zoo Iron can just drag this out, I mean, Expression's just going to keep shoving into that turret. Yeah, and five death rumble versus... <laughs> and what I will say for Ixu is at least he's not behind in levels. That is probably yeah. one of the biggest saving graces right here, because if Expression had a two level advantage on him, Ixu would just instantly die. Yeah. He would be dove under turret, there would be nothing he could really do. That's still not enough items to be dealing with those jacks here. Just the Seeker's Arm Guard and a Haunting Guys. Yeah, this is... He's He's been playing very defensively, just getting traded on, recalling, coming back into lane with Home Guards. He can get there before the next wave hits, thanks to the Home Guards and the fact that he only has to walk to the Tier 2. But uh, it is uh, an inevitably losing battle, and it will be Health Crystal into Cutlass Berry. He's going for the blade. Let's do it. <laughs> Split push for days. Split push for days indeed. So, 
I am uh, playing a, a very patient game while this dragon spawns. They've been very good about controlling the dragon in both of the games so far. They're looking for number three here at a very short 23 minutes into this game. And they're going to take it right now. Anarchy is in no position to contest this one. No, they're not, even though they do have wave pressure. Mickey Ooh. trying to split push, but... Oh, uh, wow, TP actually, especially has to use his ultimate right away, gets the stun onto Mickey, has Ignar's a ward to there. hop to, Ignar's here. I think they should just do this, Frozen's on his way. What? They, they could go for this. Well, the Snowflower coming in from the side. They're so far ahead, but Ignar just going to take one for the team at the moment. Frozen not wanting to actually engage right there. Expression going to hop out. Ignite is ticking, and there Ooh. you go. Explosive cask champagne party for his death. And that will be two kills, actually. Uh, Frozen was looking to cut that one off. Sonstar was in the bottom lane, but I think if you aggressively trade right there, uh, you can actually come out on top just due to IM's massive gold edge. I wonder what there were worried about maybe just like the cooldowns were down so they decided not to fight well i think they were just worried that there could be five people collapsing but frozen had the inside track on that so right. they actually could have started off that fight as a 3v2 in favor of im i feel a little bit a little bit hesitant you gotta you gotta be aggressive with this lead otherwise if anarchy can make plays like that and play around the fact that you're not going to meet them head on when they take risks like tp'ing into that situation yeah then that's how you get gold back if you're Anarchy. So I think you're absolutely right Anarchy, to take a risk right there if you're Anarchy, and they pull it off. Nicely done. Well, we have the Frozen Heart on Aurelia, which is a big buy against his ear as well. And against Jax. Yeah. Huge buy against Jax. Yeah, like you said, Jax is here. It really does shut down so many facets of IM's composition. Lucian. Yeah, it's very efficient. One of the most efficient items you could buy. Right. I mean, even Rek'Sai gets in a lot of auto attacks with his Q and the passive on uh, on her ultimate as well. So we'll see. I mean, if I think if Anarchy decides to force the issue in the mid lane right now, they could probably take this turret. I don't know how the fight would go. TP is down for uh, Anarchy, so yeah, I don't I don't know if I would risk that. They have to deal with expression with the TP edge, and I am responding appropriately. They know that Mickey's fainting to that side. They don't have any wards in the jungle right now. Expression has a warding totem that he could be using. It has charges in it. Put it in the tri brush, Expression. <laughs> Do it. He's, got, he's, he's part of the Marin school of top laning. You know, you have these charges of your warding totem, but you never use it. I don't know why you would be warding right now if you are, if you are Expression, but chooses not to. They also choose not to even look for a pink ward in that brush. <laughs> <laughs> the pink ward that could. Wow, that is that is not good vision control from Incredible Miracle. Yeah. They looked a lot tighter on that front in the first game. At least they still have some deep wards in on the top side of the map. I mean, you see teams get ahead. They get hockey. They get overconfident. Then they get turned on. They get, they get turned back on. So you never know. You got to keep playing tight. But you see, oh, is he going to find the pink ward now? Nope. No. no. Whoa. <laughs> Just walks past it. Puts his own ward down on the other side of the brush. At least he did that. Yes, at least he did that. Well, going to take the entire jungle right now, just trying to keep Anarchy down in whatever way they can. Maybe they just want to fa focus on the split push and the dragon control and think they can take the game that way. I know why he didn't ward earlier. He was waiting for the recharge on the on the ward, so he had two stacks. He's keeping one in reserve uh, yeah. so he can jump. Yeah, possibly. I think that's what it is. It is cleared out, however. And that's going to be the end of... Oh! Uh-oh. Oh. Blind split pushing. Oh, yeah. the ward. Up. Oh. Well, he doesn't have a ward now to jump to, so will this be the end of him? He's going to get into another 1v2 against Ixu and Mickey. Ixu oh, getting so much damage, though. There's the Zonius. He oh. just picked it up. The bait is enough. However, two people on the bottom side, no TP, and that means a very easy Baron attempt and no steal possible. Ignar keeping Lyra out of the pit. So they trade a kill onto Jax for a Baron. Not worth. Snowflower had a little bit of a Lee Syndrome moment there. He got the death sentence and he's like, I'm going in for the big play steal. So. Well, what are you going to do at that point? You've yeah. committed so much 
to killing that Jax, and you don't have anything at all in terms of global pressure without that teleport. Well, what do you do? What do you do for Anarchy right now, Monte Cristo? I think you lose 2-0 to Incredible Miracle. I think though that's your option. That's your option? I think you have a Quirky and a, a, an Aurelia in the mid lane, and you missed your power spike. You fell behind in early skirmishes, and now this Lucian, this Azir, and this Jax are only going to get scarier as this game goes on. And you already don't have the tools. Ixu has to be lanterned out. Oh! Just barely. Wow, Ignar flashed for that, too. He used Righteous Glory, his combo, and Flash to try and prevent that Lantern from being taken. He really wants the MVP. <laughs> He's making, trying to make all the big plays, just throwing the Hail Marys left and right. Yeah, seriously. Well, slowly just going to push in, as long as I am. Nothing much more that Anarchy can do. Uh, stopping, stopping this, Jax. At the very least, the one positive to this, Barry, is that Jax actually doesn't have Baron buff. That is absolutely huge <laughs> That's true. in this split push situation, that he can't put as much pressure on by himself as the rest of his team. Well, we got Nikki pulling his best expression impression right now. The old expression impression? Yeah. But as long as, just, as, long as I'm just going to take the bottom turret. Yeah, I mean, Mickey just trying to split force, trying to get whatever damage he can done, but it's, it may not be enough. I am actually backing off at the moment. Now the dragon is live. They want number four, decide that they have control over those waves. Expression is getting red. This is not a good use of Expression's time right now. Yeah, but that fourth dragon will help with long as I'm split pushing immensely. Yes. Yes, it will. Okay, here we go. Engage from Frozen. Wow, Sobler flashes the ult. Frozen still on the backside. Mickey right in the mix, but that equalizer not doing much work. Lyra manages alive. to take out Frozen. Mickey still alive, but Sonstar on the cleanup right now, especially Whoa. still 100% HP. He's going to get some stuns down right in the middle of the enemy team. Song is going to have to flash out. Now Mickey starting to turn it around because we do see the Lucian still on the ledge. Mickey will go down after the double kill. No more damage really for Anarchy. Their carries are down or injured. Sonstar trying to get some more work done. Flay right now. Tucson's just too tanky. Oh, okay, Sonstar still moving forward. He wants the dashes, gets one. There's the Ardent Blaze looking for another one. Prey Seeker gonna hit Snowflower. He's ticking up in terms of health with that health potion. Ow. Oh, the triple get with the Culling. Get cold. <laughs> Get cold indeed. That'll be a dragon for More LCIM. Dragon. Sonstar was up on that ledge for a really long time during that fight there without actually auto attacking. He was really afraid of Mickey jumping back into him. And once Mickey went down is when he started to come back. And he needed to know where Sonstar was as well because he didn't want to eat a rocket to his face too. So I think it was, he played cautiously. Yes. Maybe a little overly so, but still. He gets the call. He does get the call. He also gets the 11,000 gold lead, five Jeez. turrets to two. The the one the one thing left for Anarchy is at least their base has not been cracked by Incredible Miracle. But this Jax is so scary right now. Blade completed. He's gonna just go on to Mickey, and there's the TP again from Rumble. They want to turn it around. Tucson is there to help this time, but okay, goodbye, goodbye, expression. Wow. <laughs> Good luck on your well. own. Uh, the rest of the team was coming from Anarchy, though, and yeah. no one else was set up from IM to actually respond, so probably the, the proper decision just to let him die. You'd think Expression would learn by now, but I guess not. Lyra. Anarchy looking for that damage. Lyra just too squishy. Sonstar very damaging as he takes Snowflower down to half HP with about half a calling. Okay, crits and Frozen coming over the wall mean that Sunflower gets to spend some time with a nice black and white screen. <laughs> and now they're pushing up the mid lane. They want to take down this inhibitor turret. They have the strength to do so, certainly. Mickey oh. has a huge wave in the bottom. Oh, uh, everybody's being calling. Well, Mickey's split pushing is really not actually helping them very much this yeah. game. Could he take on this Jax 1v1, to be honest? Level 16 to level 15, he could. 
he's getting close to the blade. It's it's definitely a tough call. Yeah. If if Jax gets see the problem is that it, if Jax gets an armor item or really a because she only has that single damage type really has issues. The empowered strikes from Jax, he at least has a lot of mixed damage. Right. So it is harder for Aurelia to itemize. Has to get some MR. Has the Merc Treads, but may just not be enough. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was uh, the blade buffs, which actually ah, do help Jax quite a bit, right? Because true. they increase the range on the blade active again, mm -hmm. which was originally nerfed to keep champions like Jax from split pushing and just hitting 80 carries with it, because it got buffed to 550. So it's a lot easier to get in range of an 80 carry and use it to lock them down and kill them than it used to be. Right. And I think the Pashno said that it was in response to the, rec the Blade nerfs that had come out a while ago as well, so. Right, when Blade was originally released, it, it had the same range for both melee and range champions, then it was reduced for the, the melee champions. Anarchy doing their best Samsung Galaxy impression for spring. Oh! Ooh, not, nah, they don't want it. Well, there's nobody left. Snowflower's just there alone. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Snowflower, you poor bastard. Left high and dry. His soul leaves the mortal <laughs> coil. <laughs> By your team. He's like, I got the hook, guys. Everybody's like, lol, no one's here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we're in base. Where are you, buddy? Mickey decides to go ham on Ignar, but not enough. The unbreakable will, enough to shrug it away. Just the flesh wound. <laughs> Poor Snowflower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, here's the turret that Expression's already nearly killed. And Expression walks in and out, accidentally aggroing it. Ooh. Oh, flash pole dodged there by Lyra, but that's going to give him a little more time alone with this Baron. Ignar still it. needs to make sure that no one's going to come into the pit. Nobody will. And they don't even try. Expression actually gets the Baron buff this time. So this should be Game. the push that IM needs. No, they want five dragons. Oh, Look at them. They do. You're absolutely right. They do, <laughs> they do want five dragons. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, yeah, we're going to use most of our Baron buff just to. Or oh, just a five man push? Get this fifth dragon. Lear is there. He wants to get onto the carries. He gets found out by a ward over the wall. Oh, here comes a siege. The calling does a lot of damage. Yep, but there's the turret going down. And that means an easy inhibitor. Ooh, now they get a hook onto Expression. That is nice. Expression has to use his Counter Strike early. Uh, Frozen gets poked a little bit here, but it just isn't enough. Lyra on the flank. Mickey there. Also, Lyra. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage from Sunstar and from Frozen, but he gets over the wall, gets Lantern to safety. Yeah. Well, slow and methodical from Longzu IM. They want to go for the top one. They want three inhibs, they want five dragons, they want Baron buff, they want <laughs> everything. They want to recall for items right now. Just uh, take it all out, Barry. Greedy, greedy IM. No, no, Barry, it's not greedy. It is beautifully methodical. I definitely want to win. Incredible Barry. This, is not, this isn't greed. No, no incredible miracles See, needed greed, here. Greed implies that they, they really just, they, they're overextending in some way. They're, they're so desperate for it. There's a negative connotation. Uh -huh. This is just safe League of Legends. I don't know. They seem pretty desperate for this fifth dragon. <laughs> I, I think they This is safe. Made... Why not take the fifth dragon? Okay, fair enough. Take the guaranteed victory. Even well, take the red buff. Take the scuttle crab so you have the speed shrine. Just dot your I's and cross your T's. To be fair, actually, against KT, did they have five dragons when they made that three three in have down push? No, yeah. KT was the one who had all the dragons. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right, oh. here we go. Tucson wants to fight. Ixu finds himself alone and crowd controlled and dead without using Zonia's. Mixy, Mickey fights his way into Sonstar. He's going to get stunned eventually, but Sonstar having a really hard time. Has to flash over the wall. That'll be enough. Tucson. Whoa! Whoa. Sonstar just dashing back and forth over the wall. Sonstar with the That boots. was really good to dodge all of the threat coming in from Mickey and then from Lyra. Song Yoon gets expression, and Jax is going to win his first game of the season here in Champion Summer. I am with a very convincing 2-0 over Anarchy. What a way to make a return debut. 
Signature champion, 2-0 victory. <laughs> right there, split push your way to victory as well. Even in the matchup he didn't expect. He thought it was gonna be Aurelia yeah. Jax, I promise you. Didn't see that Aurelia coming in to the mid lane and that is a nice game and especially a solid performance from Ignar. Whew. Great, great play and Ignar, he's having a great rookie season. It was supposed to be his rookie season last time with Winterfox and NA. Didn't manage to work.